Welcome to the Real Life Podcast at Hermitage Hills, where we have real honest conversations with real people about topics relevant for today. At Hermitage Hills, we desire to see people experience life change through Jesus Christ. For more information about our church and how you can be a part of the community here, visit hermitagehills.com slash connect. Well, welcome to the Real Life Podcast. Real stories, real people, real life. Now, you may notice today that we have flipped the script. Yes. In the Real Life Podcast today, we've got real poly. Real poly, real nervous. No, don't be nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. So my name's Julie Salva. I'm a life group leader here at Hermitage Hills. And here's what we're going to do today. We are going to introduce real poly to you. We're going to hear his stories, hear his background. Um, we're going deep poly into your childhood issues. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, we're not. But I think it's great that the people will get to know who you are. Sure. You know, I think Sunday mornings we see you and you're, you know, you're, you're up, up there. Right. And who are you? So that's what we're going to dive into. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Fire away. All right, I'm going. So first of all, let's start with the basics. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? What was that like? So I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. I did not know uh, that. I've already interrupted you. You didn't even finish a sentence and I interrupted you. (laughs) I had no idea. Okay, go on. I did. Go on. And I lived there uh, maybe a couple of years, and then we moved to Ohio where my dad had a car dealership until I was three, and then they say the story is I had asthma. And I did have asthma, but the story was we have to move to Florida because little Poli, because my dad was big Poli, right, yeah. has asthma and the cold temperatures are not healthy for him. So I was the reason the family had to move to Florida and away from family. So so I, all your family was up there? Yes, yes. No idea. Yeah. Okay. So you were, what, three years old when you moved three, to Florida? Three, uh-huh. Kids so really, Orlando's where we moved to. I call Orlando my home. Right, right. So growing up in Orlando, you are the youngest. Youngest of five. Okay. I have four older sisters. What's that like having yeah, four so older sisters? Basically, I had five mothers growing up. Is the way, is the way that worked. <laughs> Everyone would tell me how to comb my hair when I had hair. I was getting my same Yeah, one. how to dress, how to behave, what to say, what not to say, where to go, what to do. Yeah. I had five people telling me those <laughs> That's things. That's hard, Polly. Yeah, because my older sister, she's 10 years older than me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So really, by the time I got in the teen years, she was already pretty much... Uh, on her way to be married and gone. So this is what I want to know. Two, two questions. Um, a, what are their names? Uh-huh. And then B, how did you, what is Polly? Okay. So my oldest is Sherry. Okay. And then my second oldest is Rixie. Okay. Uh, my dad liked Pixie. My mom liked Trixie. And they end up with Rixie. Rixie. Is, okay. is the way I heard that story. Okay. My third oldest is Melanie. Okay. So, they, so they kind of went normal, abnormal, normal. <laughs> <laughs> and then my fourth sister is Jolly, J-O-L-I. Yeah. Uh, and none of the, my sisters have middle names. Really? Yeah, most okay. people have middle names. They don't have any middle names. You have, have a middle name, though. I do, because I'm a junior. Right. So my dad is Henry Clark Rouse Sr., and I'm junior. Henry Clark Rouse Jr. Yes, H-C-R, which is kind of cool, because we'll get to moment my kids. Uh, Dustin's the oldest. All of his kids are H-C-R. Really? Yep. That's neat. It's okay. kind of nice, isn't it? I think it's super nice. Yeah. But Polly. Now, where, so where does that come from, from Henry Clark? So this is the way the story goes. I wish it was a really good story, uh, but you to me it's it not. Up. Yeah. I mean, no one, no, no one's one would know. know. No I one's mean. gonna know. Uh, but of course, it was big Polly, little Polly growing up. Right. My dad got his nickname uh, from his dad, which I never met. He passed okay. before I was ever born. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but supposedly my dad's. Uh, dad, who had a best friend, used to stick his hand in the shirt like Napoleon. So when they would mm-hmm. see them coming down the road, they go, oh, here comes Napoleon and Poli. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but that's huh. what they said. So they, he gave the nickname to his son, who he gave the nickname to me. And I have three boys, Dustin, Drew, and Daniel. Right. We call them Dustin, Drew, and Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No more. No more poli. Yeah. And I've, in fact, I've met uh, two other polies in my life that were male. There were some female, but males only really? two. One of those was Six Flags Over Georgia in Atlanta. I was walking around and someone was yelling poli. So you turned. Yeah. yeah. So who's who's yelling for me? And then right. I noticed another guy answered to it. 
And I went, are you kidding me? So I went over and, of course, yeah. introduced myself uh, to him. Had so, he ever met another Polly? Uh, I don't think so. Huh. It's pretty. It's probably yeah. one of the first things I get is, yeah. that's very unusual. Right. Name. When I go to a restaurant, you've right. probably seen me do this, have, where yeah. people say, you know, what should this go under? I tell them, Bob. <laughs> For years, I say Poli, and they go, "What? Who? Polly? How do you spell Polly, that? Oh, All yeah. that? You know, Bob yeah. never gets a never gets a question." I like that. Now that I'm at restaurants, if I hear the host call for Bob, I am going to look around to see that's, if you're there. That's me. That's your alias. Yeah, it's B O B frontwards and backwards. Pretty easy. simple. There's easy. no questions. It's very easy. Okay, so you're in Florida. You're growing up. You've got your four sisters. What did you like to do? What was little boy Poli like? Well, I was really fortunate, blessed. We, I grew up on uh, what's called Bell Isle in Orlando, which is south side of Orlando, Pine Castle area. Mm-hmm. Probably most people don't know where it is, but it was a, it was a little island between two lakes, Big Lake and Little Lake Conway. Is it close to Disney? Uh, people would know that. Yeah, it's. Well, I mean, it's it's on that side of okay. town, All but right. not close to yeah. Disney. Okay. But I was pre Mickey. So I saw Disney come to Orlando and change everything. It sure did. But, okay, so back Yeah, to so you. my favorite thing was probably as a boy was the neighborhood boys going fishing on the mm-hmm. uh, we would go dock to dock to dock to dock and get up early in the morning. I can't believe my mom let me do this. Yeah. But actually, back then, it was, I guess, safer and so sure. forth. We would get up you know, before the sun got up, and we'd get our fishing poles and our bait, which was bread or hot dogs, mm-hmm. you know, and we would just go out, yeah. and we'd go all day long. Yeah. We'd pack a lunch. We'd go dock to dock. We'd swim some. We'd fish some. We'd play football some. We'd swim some. I mean, all day long. And I wouldn't come until it was getting dark. I would come home, and my mm-hmm. parents were okay with that. I would never let my no. Kids it's a different. Do that. It's a different world yeah. for sure. Yep. So you mentioned that you would pack a lunch. Let's just take a little side right here uh-huh. because there's a sandwich that you like. I have um, been informed but for, straight from your mouth, and and I need the people, y'all, in your comments. I I really want you to to take a stand. You have yeah. to stand for something. Yes. So what is this sandwich? Well, my mom actually introduced this sandwich to me. It was a cottage cheese and onion sandwich. Oh my goodness. It's cottage really good. You onion. take cottage cheese and onion, cut it up and put it on bread with a little pepper, cracked pepper on it. It's really good. I'm Okay. It's a Rouse thing, I guess. I guess. But I, I did find it in a cookbook. Do you remember that? No. I actually found that. And, no. I, and I, you must have missed that Sunday. I, I showed did. it to the church. This is a actual cookbook uh, item. I might have still been in healing from knowing you <laughs> liked that sandwich. I may have blocked it. I don't. I don't know. So okay. All right. So we talked a little bit about your childhood. Your hobbies were fishing. What yep. other things did you like to do? Uh, growing up, yeah. Uh, well, I was really into uh, golf. Okay. I picked it up when I was in seventh grade. It all came a result of. Of course, most little boys growing up want to be football sure. stars. Yeah. You know, you married to a yeah. football star. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to be that football star, but I was like little. I was small. Right. And uh, I had a junior high coach come over to me one day uh, when I was trying out for the team. He says, hey, you got heart, but let me tell you something. You need to go home because these boys are going to kill you. Oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> so I went, you know, okay. He says, yeah. listen, why don't you pick up another sport that yeah. may be better fitting for you? And right. he introduced me uh, to golf. And so that's how it all started. And I played golf uh, all the way through my junior high, high school, and some of my collegiate so college, years. Too. Yes, yeah. um, I did. Loved it. Do you still play? I do. Okay. Not as often as I have in the past. Right. Because uh, of time sure. and schedule. But I still I enjoy it. It took me a while to get to a place of the competitiveness yes. and the aggravation I would put on myself because I. Right. Because I wasn't playing as often and practicing, I, w- I, w- I was losing some of the... And the you have to practice with golf. I mean, Got just, to, yeah. got to. So that got... But now I'm back to, you know, I love being outside. I like being with, out with other people. I love just playing now and enjoying the company and having fun. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we're still in your childhood. Yep. Time you got in trouble. <laughs> if there's multiple, uh, this, this we're here. This is supposed to be a brief podcast, but... <laughs> the best one. There is so many times, absolutely, um, I got in trouble. I will tell you one story where a friend of mine took a pack of cigarettes uh, from his dad, I think. And uh, of course, like I said, I lived on Belle Isle. There was a bridge that went over. And so that was a place the kids would go hang out. And I remember that time he brought these cigarettes. He said, let's try this. And so I did. 
And uh, next thing I know, I hear my dad's voice oh. calling my name from uh. above. And, you know, it's, it's interesting how the Lord always allows you know, the right time, the right people, yeah. be the right place. Because yeah. those happen with my kids and, and oh, okay. you and I, that we won't go into that, no, but uh-uh. that's, that's for them yeah. to tell. But that was one of mine. So he okay. called my name and, you know, get on your bicycle, go home. And we had a little conversation that was pretty intense. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. Okay, so you're in Orlando, you're growing up, you've yep. made it through the cigarette saga, <laughs> and you, you put that behind you. Um, tell me about this. You're married to Julie. Yes. How long have y'all been married? 42 years. 42 years. And y'all met in Orlando. Yes. So how did you meet? What's that like? Well, so the background is we we knew each other in high school. Right. Um, she went to Boone High School, which mm-hmm. is kind of a it was an upper class, nice high school. Uh-huh. I went to Oak Ridge High School, was more the the cow town, you know, yeah. uh, kind of poor boys high school kind of thing. Okay. So we knew of each other. Okay. Uh, because of our a church association. We went to the same church, but she was more of the goody two shoes, and I was more out there with with the others. So she was a church girl, and you were a back row church. Yes, kid. yes, okay. I was. All right. So go on. Uh, so I, I, um, I think this question comes later, but I don't want to go into it. But yeah. so during college. Um, I came back from um, a school and uh, I, had, I had shifted a lot of things in my life in my relationship to Christ. Well, let me pause you right okay. there then. Let's finish the Julie story. Uh-huh. But that's interesting, the shifting of things in your relationship with Christ. Yeah. Why don't you tell us how you came to Jesus and what that shift looked like? When I, I grew up, my family, yeah. uh, going to church, okay. all the crew, we, we had a pew in the balcony and we were consistent, but not regular, sure. is how I, yeah. I would put it. We yeah. were more than Christmas and Easter, Easter. Yeah. Uh, but we weren't every weekers, uh, but we were, we, were, we were consistent. And um, so I remember at nine years old, uh, we had the Lord's Supper, communion, some people call it, yeah. on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they passed the, the elements down the row, everyone was taking the bread and the cup. And when it came to me, I, I reached out. My dad grabbed my hand. He says, no, that's not for you. I said, and, well, all my sisters are doing it. Why right. why am I not doing it? And the best he knew how, right. he shared, well, your this is for church members, mm-hmm. and you're not a church member. I, well, how do you do that? Mm-hmm. He says, well, you know, at the end of the service, you go down front, tell the preacher, and he'll take care of it. And I went, well, okay. So as the service came to conclusion that day, I, I went down front and told the pastor I want to become a church member so I could take the Lord's Supper. Did you get the Lord's Supper to go? Is... Uh, <laughs> no, that came later. Okay. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the series, and I'm not blaming anyone, but this is what sure. happened to me right. is they sat me down the front pew and, and this big man sat next to me and gave me a clipboard, a white card, had you know, put your name, address, and all that stuff on it. Mm-hmm. His name was Deacon. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, boy, here, fill this out. Yeah. I, yes, sir. Yeah. And so I did that. Next thing I know, they're announcing my name and I'm standing in front of the whole church. Yeah. And everybody's plotting, everybody's happy. Yeah. People coming by shaking my hand, you know, uh, little ladies are peeking my cheek. Yes, They're so happy. Yes. We go home. My parents are happy. Next thing I know, I get this little card in the mail. You can get baptized. Family comes into town. I get baptized. Everybody's, you know, everybody's really pleased. So I'm pleased. Everybody's sure. pleased. Everything's good. This is, the problem is I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Mm. Uh, I was a church member. Sure. Uh, and and, those I, are could two take, very different and I could take the Lord's Supper according you could. to that. You could. Um, but when I was 16 years old, uh, we had a youth pastor come to our church by the name of Dennis Ball. And uh, Dennis came in and started teaching and loving kids and telling about a relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, well, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. It's different. Uh, and back then, it was the big thing like, Jesus wants to be your best friend. Now, yeah. Theologically, we could talk a lot about that, but we won't go there. Right, right. But it it at least got my attention. Sure. He wants to be my friend? What are you talking about? Right. And so the more he taught and, and the more I got involved there, the more I realized I, I wasn't right. And so there was a mission trip uh, that we went on to Jamaica. Still, I, I had not given my life to Christ. Right. Uh, but girls in Jamaica, 
Sounds like a good trip to me, uh, you know. And uh, so I went on that trip. Right. Uh, and sang the songs and did the stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then about halfway through that trip uh, is where the Lord just kind of very clearly revealed himself to me that, yeah, you're a church member, but you don't know me. Mm. And I went, oh, my goodness. And... Um, it's where I knelt with about five of my buddies, and we all prayed to receive Christ together. And um, then we we went out to a, a doc, our youth pastor, Dennis. Mm-hmm. He said, "Go go put on clothes that you sin the most." And I had my golf my golf team yes, shirt, sure, yeah. And I put that on and with a bathing suit. And he took us out to the the Caribbean Ocean there and baptized uh, me and my buddies. Uh, with the youth group watching, and it was pretty, pretty. I mean, I can remember it, uh, as it as it was today. So yeah, there's two things that jump out to me with that. One, put on the clothes that you send the most in. Yeah. Why do you think he had you do that? He just was trying to give me a visual aid yeah. of how uh, God was going to forgive all of that. Sure. And He had forgiven all that. Sure. And when you are buried with baptism, mm-hmm. you're raised to walk in newness of life. Mm-hmm. Same shirt, but new goal. So I would imagine, and we're going to get back to the Julie story. I'm not forgetting yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I would imagine that there are people who watch this or listen to this that that maybe are in different places in their journey with yeah, Jesus. Sure. Um, so when we say kind of a church word, um, God revealed to me. Yeah. That, what, tell me more about that. What is that like, God revealing? What is yeah. that? Yeah, like? it, it's, it's just the working of the Holy Spirit that brings such a genuine uh, sense of awareness yeah. of the fact that you, you have become... You have sinned against a holy God. Yeah. Um, and I know that word sin, people don't want to even talk much about today or even yeah. mention. Yeah. But it's real. Sure. Um, scripture teaches clearly. And I became very, very uh, convicted of that, that I was a sinner in need of a Savior. Yes. And in that moment, I just... I just you knew. I acknowledged that. Mm. And and said, yeah, I I need a I need to turn to Christ. I think that that's such a telling word, and and this is not the time I plan to go deep really right here. <laughs> but I think that's that the acknowledgement is something you know that that really changes the whole story. Right, yeah. right. That's, well, that's you great. know, my my story is all that previously. I'm not saying it wasn't important, of course. But you know, the fact that everyone was happy for me, right. Um, but I had not acknowledged anything except I wanted my name in the computer. And you wanted the Lord's and Supper. And I wanted the Lord's Supper like my sisters. Because those crackers or something. Yeah, it's ex- Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't know. Because I hadn't had them before. Yeah. <laughs> but then I went, what else is this? Yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Cracker and grape juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get back to the Julie story. Okay. So, uh, so that, at 16, yeah. I came back. So I, I gave my life to Christ. And um, so... I had gone off to we we knew each other in high school. Yeah. But she, again, she was the church girl. The church girl. Yeah. And I was just becoming someone who was learning to grow in Christ. Right. And so we really didn't associate much. We knew of each other right. from across the room, but we mm-hmm. didn't speak much or do anything together. Mm-hmm. I went off to college. Uh, we're gonna talk about that some. A little bit. Okay. Uh, so I come back, mm-hmm. but in that journey. Um, where I make a personal shift in the direction I was going from playing PGA golf. Let's talk about it now. Um, to to ministry. Mm-hmm. So when I got out of high school, my dad's dream and my dream was for him to see me walk down the 18th fairway of the Masters one day. Oh, that's a dream. Yeah, big that's dream. Good. Sure. So I was I went to play collegiate golf, right. and uh, God was calling me in the ministry. Mm. And so I I said, well, God, listen, I'm for you, man. I am. But yeah. this is something my dad and I have had for a long time. And, and you know, you just need to get on board mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. God yeah. says, no, that's not what I have for you. And I'm yeah. going, no, this is what I'm going to do. Be. Yeah, I think that Exactly. For me. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how it went. Yeah. So I went to college and, um, you know, the Lord has a way of getting your attention. And yeah. even though I practice and 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 played very well. There was a point that, you know, I I, I couldn't break eighty to save my life. Mm. Now, of course, some people may not even know what that means. But I mean, if you you breaking, can't breaking you, eighty is yeah, good. you can't keep no. your scholarships when you no. you can't 
playing like that. Right. You got to play par, just right at par. So um, I was released from that that uh, Eastern Kentucky University is where I went to go play. Yeah. And I went to another school okay. who gave me a chance. So I came back home. My game came back. I was not. I was. I was playing square. I was playing wow. good. I went to that college to play for them. I can guess. Same thing happened. Same thing. I, I just. I just couldn't. If I was playing Eastern Kentucky, sure. Different type of grass, different type Absolutely. of terrain, different type of golf yeah. than when I grew up in flat Florida. Right. You know, Bermuda grass. So, but when I went back to South Florida to play, I, I lost that excuse. Yeah. And uh, I was in um, a church service one Sunday evening, and the pastor at the end uh, was given the invitation. In Baptist life, we, right. we give people opportunity to make a decision or come for prayer at the end of the service right. time. We invite them. We invite them to come. Yeah, just, just to take a step sure. if you need to. And so he was, he was doing that, and he stopped. He stopped the invitation, said, for some reason, God just really pressed on me. There's someone here that God's calling the ministry. You've been running for some time. Wow. And, uh, boy, you need, tonight's the night. You need to do it. And I'm going, well, who, who, who is, is that? that? <laughs> you know? Clearly, and then, so someone, we, someone needs to listen. Yeah, somebody <laughs> needs to wake up. So he sings another verse, and he stops. He goes, if people, I'm really sorry. I apologize. I, you know I don't do this, but this is serious. This is a call that God's placed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, man, it just fell on me. I went, oh, my gosh, he's talking, me. He's talking about me. Wow. And so I, I went in and spoke to him and said, I think, I think I've been running from God, and I need to come back and surrender what God has for me, which means letting go of the dream my dad and I had for so long and picking up. Uh, God's plan and, and, and God's purpose uh, for me in ministry. And um, so I knew a couple of things. You know, first I had to tell my golf coach, mm. you know, I was leaving the school yeah. and going back home. And that wasn't so tough because um, I, had, I hadn't been there but one semester. And um, But when I came home, I had to tell my dad, mm. you know. And that was an interesting conversation, yeah. you know, where – my dad was, you know, good church goer, you know, but when I started talking about how God was called, he's going, what are you talking about? Right. Those are, those are we, weird words to people sometimes. Yeah, we have sacrificed so much so you could, I mean. Absolutely. You know this. You have I a do. son who plays and you know the expense yes. that it takes to get there. He says, we've sacrificed so much so you could do what we felt like was best for you. And now you're telling me you're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and he, I'll say this, and then let me follow that up. He said, you'll be poor all your life and you'll never be able to take care of your family. Oh, that's right. Wow. And I went, well, okay. But I really, Dad, I, this is, I really, so we, you know, it, it was not, a happy moment. Yeah. No. Um, but years later, yeah, he did come back, yeah, and say to me years later and go, you know, I said that and that that was wrong. Yeah. God is God's God's blessed you in some pretty incredible ways and. Well, and that speaks really highly of your dad too yeah. to be able to come back and make that statement. Yeah. 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 Um, so where were we? We're Julie. Still on the we're Julie still trying story. to get. So I come it's back. It's an easy question, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back from college, and now I'm on this. I'm on this thing where, ah, this sounds so crazy, but I mean, I was. I had surrendered completely. Right. And part of that surrender was, okay, God, I'm getting on the fast track to get my education to get to seminary, to get training, and and be in the ministry. And that's what I'm giving everything to. And so um, I was at a place in my relational journey where I was saying, you know, God, I need you to I need you to kind of lead me to that partner in my life that would be the right person for me. And, and that, you know, I, let me stop you for a minute. Being a pastor's wife is hard, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm not a pastor's wife, but from the outside looking in, I think yeah. it would be hard. It oh, yeah. would be a special person who would have that same type of calling. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I I felt led, and I said, Lord, I'm going to take six months, and I'm, I'm not going to date anybody. I'm just going to focus all my energy towards you. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to date Jesus is kind of what I said, which sounds kind of corny now, yeah. but back then it was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. date Jesus. Yeah. So that's what I did, man. I went to so many discipleship classes and I met with people and, you know, I just deeply uh, went for it. Probably one of the most uh, intensely spiritually growing seasons of my life. Um. And so when I moved back home, I was right at the end of that six-month time. And uh, I went to the Wednesday night youth group meeting at First Baptist Church Orlando, which Julie was there. And um, this is what happened. That morning, my sister – no, no, no. Let's see. Let me get this right order. I went to the meeting, and, uh, oh, I sat down front with a friend at the piano. I don't play piano. He didn't either. He was just sitting there. Yeah. I sat down, and uh, Julie came walking in the room, and he said, have you ever thought about dating Julie Bradley? I said, oh, no, 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 mm-hmm. no. You don't understand. God and I are on this yeah, dating no, deal. Dating Jesus. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not dating anybody. He went, oh, okay, no big deal. Yeah. Uh, so we're leaving the meeting, and a girl named Karen Croson comes up to me afterwards and says, um, have you ever thought about taking out Julie Bradley? And I went, what? Have you been talking to yeah, Keith, who right. is my friend at the piano? She said, no, what's Keith got to do with it? She said, nothing. She said, you don't understand. Yeah. Jesus and I are dating. Yeah. I'm not dating anybody. She said, well, okay, no video. Yeah. So I'm on my way to my car, <laughs> and uh, another friend comes up before I get in the car and goes, hey, before you head out, I just I want to run something by you. Yeah. I said, what? Have you ever thought about taking out Julie Bradley? And I'm going, what is going on here? No, 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 no. I go home, go to bed, wake up the next morning, and my sister, Jolly, has walked into my room. She wasn't even there. Yeah. She, her room was on her side of the house, and my room was on my side of the house yeah. kind of thing. She never came into my room. She came to her room, woke me up, says, hey, I got to go somewhere, but I just want to run something by you. Have you ever thought about taking Julie Bradley out? Has she been talking to Karen or Keith? Or, no, no, no. Right. I went, what? So she walks. I go, no, no, no. She goes, okay, no big deal. She right. walks out, and I sit there and go, you, and you're, you heard the story. You've heard the story. You know, I sent you a, a canoe. I yes, sent you a swamp yes. buggy. I sent you a helicopter. Yes, yes. You know, why didn't you take what I yeah. – it was kind of one of those moments like, I've, I've, I've sent you so many people to yeah. give you the word, and you're just being dumb. Yeah. And I went, oh, my gosh, is this it? Yeah. And uh, so uh, we had the next church meeting. Uh, I saw her, and uh, afterwards I said, hey, would you like to go eat and see a movie? And she'll tell you to this day. Yeah. She'll tell you this day. She has no idea why she said yes, but she said yes. <laughs> she gave me a piece of paper with her phone number. She says, call me, let me know. Yeah. When, when we'll get together. I went, okay. Mm-hmm. She walked off and I walked off. She went around the corner and went, what What did I just do? I don't <laughs> want to go out with this guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because she knew the yeah. the old. The old pulley. The old me. Yeah. So anyway, so we end up uh, going out and um, now we've been married. 42 years. 42 years and have three wonderful boys and wow. six great Wonderful grandkids. And that's a that's a good story, and three daughter in laws too. And three daughter in laws. Yeah, precious. So so tell me about your kids. So you have three boys. Yes. Give me a memory of those three boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have many. <laughs> well, they're Dustin, Drew, and Daniel, mm-hmm. and uh, they are. Let's see, this year, 39, 37, 35. Okay. And uh, a memory I go back to is we had a season for family vacations that we would go to Callaway Gardens yeah. outside of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, those were some really good times where we would uh, stay a few days at Callaway, ride bicycles through the woods, mm-hmm. and see the different classes and things. And then we would go to Atlanta, go to a Braves game. Uh, we'd go to Stone Mountain Laser Show. I mean, every year we kind of did yeah, the same did. the same loop. Yeah. Uh, and we had those moments where we would try to get them positioned just right by the flowers and take pictures, which they never cooperated. Uh, <laughs> it's the way it worked. Yeah, boys, flowers, pictures. But they all remember that. We remember that. Okay. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Real Life, a ministry of Hermitage Hills. If you'd like to be a part of a community seeking to follow Jesus and experience life change, visit us at hermitagehills.com slash connect. You'll also find ways to ask for prayer and how to take the next steps in your faith journey. We'd love to partner with you as you grow in your faith and experience real life.